Okay, you're good to just cool. do it casually. All right. What's up, guys? We're hanging out here at the Max Academy in Apple Valley, California. We're going to be shooting some courses of fire today and putting this brand new track Toric 4.5 to 30 through its paces. We got the one and only Mr. Tyler Hughes that's going to run us through some various stages. And we're going to try to test this scope as much as we can today and really push it to its limits. We just zeroed up at the 100 yard line. Everything looks good, but we want to make sure that we have that solid zero because we do plan on taking a couple shots at one mile today. So again, we're going to definitely, definitely try to give this scope a run for its money, but so far it's been holding up great and uh, I can't wait to see what it does for the rest of the day. What do you think? The reticle is nice though. I actually like this reticle probably better than my Z-Con or my Tangent. I like it better than like the skimmer and all the kids. I hate the skimmer. I like to have a little something. Because the pressure's like getting a quick mill. Well, you know. Okay, some of these scopes, you don't see a, anything until two mils. That's fucking 500 yards. You know what I mean? There's nothing. You're still holding air out to 500 yards. Well, the skimmer. Scope out. I'm going to take the up, Allen sorry. key and uh, slip my turrets back to zero. Basically what I want to do is unscrew this top cap here. And it'll just come right out, pick the turret up, switch it to zero, put the uh, top cap right back in. Now, there is this ring here that you'll take a second Allen key yeah. and it's a clutch system and you would slip that until it stops. But luckily or coincidentally for me, where it stops is where my zero is. So I don't need to do that. So I'm just gonna wind this right back in. And that's it. Now I can go up and I have a hard hard stop at zero. And that's it. Same thing for the windage. I'm gonna slip it in and unscrew this little top cap here. And it does have an O-ring so that It'll protect against water, dust, dirt, and debris. Uh, pull this off, line it up with zero. Get it lined up there, slip it back down. And once it's in this position, it's locked, so it can't move. So you don't have to worry about moving the turret once you've put it back and you're trying to tighten this. And then just give it a good tight right here. And that's it. And then turn it. All right, so we're about to attempt the one mile target. It's actually 1,790 yards. It's on an 11 degree angle, so a little bit up the hill. So you definitely want to make sure you account for that. According to my Kestrel here, it's going to be 22.1 mils of dial. The great thing about this track Toric is that it has so much elevation in it that I'll be able to dial all of that without having to hold any extra in the reticle. And that brings a few advantages because it allows you to stay optically in the center without having to come down in your field of view. So also if you miss, it makes it easier to spot your misses and make corrections off of that without having to really hold at the bottom edge of your field of view. Because if you have to do that, then obviously if you miss below or left or right, you might not be able to see exactly where you hit or miss to make that correction. So we're gonna attempt it, we just went two for three at the 1200 yard target so we're feeling kind of good the wind isn't terrible but we held half a mil at 1200 uh 0.5 to center so we'll see we'll see what it ends up i'm thinking maybe uh eight nine tenths at a mile is what i'm going to start with and and we'll see how it goes from there all right so i'm going to dial the scope for the mile target so i'll start it at zero that's 10 20 and the nice thing is this has revolution indicators on it. it has lines so that you can see exactly what revolution you're on so you know How many mils you just dialed and uh, That should be about it right there I'm Gonna lock that down just to make sure it doesn't move at all and uh, we'll send a couple at at 1790 that's about 30 yards further than a mile and see how we do it was Just under the target uh. 
elevation back down to what it was. Take that point two off. Yeah. Okay. Hold left, one mil. All right, so we just shot at the 1,790 yard target. That's a little over a mile, and we ended up with a third round impact. Super exciting for me. Uh, I ended up having to hold a little extra elevation because of the fact that I had to account for my bullets going into the transonic region, um, shooting a very small caliber for that kind of distance. If I was gonna use this scope on a bigger gun and routinely take it out to a mile and 2,000 and 2,500 yards and beyond in those ELR distances, I would definitely throw a more aggressive base on it. I only have 20 MOA in here because for PRS, you don't really need that much elevation. You know, we're usually shooting maybe 13, 1400 yards max. Uh, but this scope is capable of a lot more because it has so much internal elevation. Uh, again, it has about 40 mils of internal elevation from what I counted from top to bottom. So with an extra 20 MOA in here for a total of 40 MOA, this thing would easily be able to dial to the mile and beyond for what I needed. But third round impact held uh, about 0 0.7, 0 0.8 wind, so initial wind call was pretty good uh, based on what, what we were kind of feeling out here. Not a whole lot of wind, but enough to make a little bit of difference, so it was a lot of fun. Uh, we're gonna go shoot some other courses of fire over here and, and do some more dynamic shooting, some obstacles and stuff like that, but tracks out to a mile, so, so far so good. I'm ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Tactical dial. Damn it. All right, so this next course of fire is gonna be a brick wall. Our target is pretty close, it's 270 yards, but it's on a major uphill, about 22 degrees up the hill. So definitely have to try to account for that. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for a position kind of in the middle of the wall that I can build a solid foundation between my elbow and my knee, something where I can get kneeling. If I can't do that, I'm gonna see if I can get lower, maybe even a you know, a high prone, but uh, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So I was able to find a comfortable position where I actually wound up sitting with both of my knees touching my elbows. So real solid, got an impact on the first one, looked pretty centered up, went for the second one and I missed that one. I just didn't hold enough wind. But honestly, man, the scope is, is tracking great. Uh, the glass is good enough that I can see my impacts and see my misses. So we'll move on to the next stage and see how we do. All right, so next stage, we're gonna be shooting off of that bridge right there. I'm gonna try to pick a lower position to keep that center of gravity low, minimize the reticle wobble. Uh, scope is still tracking fantastic. Went two for two on the last stage, so hopefully we can do the same on this one.
All right, so we just shot the bridge. I was able to hit both targets, two for two, so that was pretty awesome. I was able to get into a lower position, dial the scope to my dope, sent two, both impacts, so we're gonna keep rocking and rolling. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple shots at a closer target, 238 yards, so nothing too crazy. First position is gonna be right here. Let's set my bag down. I'm then going to dial my scope, seven tenths. I love that these numbers are so big because it's much easier to see. I'm then going to acquire the target. Does anybody know this? Was? Yeah, it's ours. Which, you're gonna have to cut this part out because uh, I lost it. Where the fuck did it go? Jesus Christ. Remember that time I couldn't find a target? Oh, oh there it is. Okay. All right. So let me reposition that. Now that I found it. Okay. Uh, somewhere right about there. Okay. After the target's been located and we dial, we'll send one. Okay, change positions. Because it's the same target, I can leave my scope dialed, locking turrets ensure that it doesn't slip or get bumped to a different dial. Okay, and last position, repeat, same thing. There you go. All right, so we just finished our day here at Max Ordnate Academy. So once again, shout out to them for letting us come out here and hang out, shoot a few different courses of fire and try to put this uh, new track torque through its paces. Once again, this is the four and a half to 30 by 56 millimeter. It's a brand new scope for them, but honestly, it's pretty awesome. So we did a few different dynamic positions today. We shot around a car, inside a car. We did some rooftops. We did some uh, natural terrain shooting, rocks barricades, pretty much everything. We even did the mile shot or just a little bit over a mile. And honestly, the scope performed perfectly. Uh, we had it, you know, banging up against barricades, banging up against cinder blocks. I'm carrying the rifle like a, uh, by the scope, like a carry handle. And this thing is not a light rifle by any stretch. This is uh, probably a 22 pound rifle and I'm just picking it up by the scope and it's still held true on the tracking, held true on the zero, no issues at all. Uh, a few features that I love about this is one, the locking turret. So when I walk up to a stage and I dial my dope and then I lock down my turret, I know that it's not going to accidentally move both the elevation and the windage lock, which I really like. Uh, you don't want any of those. Missed points. The parallax again goes down to 25, which I love because we didn't bring it out today, but you could easily throw this on a 22 rifle and go and shoot 22 matches. Uh, it's got plenty of elevation and it's actually got the four and a half to 30 and with a 22 you can use all of that magnification range from the bottom to the top end because there's no recoil and you'll be able to focus in at a 25. Uh, we didn't use the illumination today because we were out in daylight but it does have some great illumination settings. It's a one through 11 with an off in between each position. So that's really awesome. Uh, again, we didn't use it today but maybe next time we will. Uh, the other thing that I like about this is the reticle. So the reticle, we're going to try to get in the video for you to put a, a visual image in there. But basically, because the tree extends all the way down, it allows you to hold for a bunch more elevation. So as I explained in the mile shot, I ended up having to top out the maximum adjustment of the elevation that I have available to me and then still hold an additional one and a half mils in the reticle but I was able to hit the target because in the reticle I was able to bracket the target for both my wind and my elevation because of the tree and the reference marks. Otherwise, I would have been holding out an empty space and it would have been much harder to hit. So definitely thankful for the reticle. I love the design. If you guys see on the main horizontal stadia, it's 0.2 increments. But the other thing that I love is that it has the 0.5 as a quick reference. So if you know, oh man, that target, I'm gonna start with a 0.5 wind hold, you have a quick reference point right there, 
0.5 there's a little hash so it's super easy super fast uh, as well as the elevation going down and on the tree 0.2s so a really really useful reticle all the way around super easy to read not too much information like some that are just super busy with a whole bunch of stuff going on but enough that, that you can really get by for both center fire and for 22 especially if you try to do some 22 elr as well you know 600 yards with a 22 is definitely doable um, especially with something like this so you saw the whole process we started up zeroing the scope slipping the turrets back to zero nothing crazy going on there pretty straightforward process then you saw us dial it a bunch I, I pretty much made it a point today to dial for most every target because obviously we know that it's possible to hold over in the reticle for the targets but we want to make sure that the tracking stays true no matter how many times I'm going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and lock and unlock we want to make sure that mechanically it holds up and honestly it really did and as you can see we're out here in kind of more of a desert environment so you got that fine grit sand it's you know getting in the magazines getting on the round stuff like that but and yeah the scope is, is a little beat up it's a little dusty but still running running like old faithful it's still holding true and that's really what matters honestly uh so once again a big big shout out to track for letting us uh kind of abuse this scope really for for a few weeks now and put it through its paces and honestly i think that it has a lot a lot of features for the price point that it's coming in at it's it's a great great scope and uh you know i can't wait to see the the final production models once again this was a prototype but from what i was told this is basically the final prototype so there shouldn't be any changes to the production models from this so excited to see it uh down the line and i hope to see some of you guys at future matches uh running this scope